Today's scripture is found in John chapter 5, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 8 from the ESV. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalid, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the waters are stirred up, and while I am going, or another steps down before me, Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. The Lord bless us for the reading of his word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, um, today, like I mentioned earlier, we're here. We want to prepare ourselves. We want to pray and um, ask God to um, do something special in our lives today. We want to come expecting. And so um, we just read, as the children go to Children's Church, we just read in the Bible, Jesus healing a paralytic man. And out of this story we just read, Jesus asked a question that for many may seem elementary, right? Or just um, Captain Obvious, right? Here's a man has been crippled for 38 years, laying there. Now, something about this pool of Bethesda. There was a, uh, a, a, a rumor or, or a folklore that uh, an angel had at one time come and, and, and bathed in that water. And so uh, the belief was that every time the water would be stirred for somehow, and if anyone touched it, they would be healed. And so people gathered around this pool to try to receive this healing. And this particular man laid there for 38 years. And because of his condition, every time that this stirring happened and he would try to get to the water, somebody else who was faster than him would get in the water and receive the healing, right? And so you would think that Jesus would look at this man and say, in your condition, you know, maybe you need some help. He asked them a simple question. Do you want to be healed? You see, people were waiting for some kind of sign from this pool to happen. But someone greater than the pool was there. Someone greater than the pool was passing by. I love it because most of these stories that we hear of Jesus healing somebody tells us he was just walking through a city. He was just passing through a town. He was just walking by. I believe that Jesus is here right now walking through our aisles and in this place. And Jesus asked him a question that we would say, Jesus, why would you ask this man this? Just touch him and heal him. No. No. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? You see, God gives us gifts, but we have to play our part. I've been preaching about this the past few weeks, just about uh, every sermon I've preached talked about this, how, how God gave the people of Israel the land, and when they got to the border, what did he tell them? Now go possess it. Play your part. And our part is to believe that God wants to do something great and wonderful in our lives. 
Do you want to be healed? Another incident is in, uh, in Luke chapter 17. And Jesus, again, is walking through a city. He's walking through a town. And all of a sudden, there's these 10 lepers. And I've discussed before the life of a leper, right? They were ostracized. They were pushed aside. They were sent out of the, the community. You couldn't be with your family anymore because you would contaminate them. And then they would die. So you had to leave your children and your wife or your husband and, and leave. You lost your job. You had no income. And according to the law, you couldn't go to the temple. So you lost your religion. That was the life of the leper. And here, 10 lepers see that Jesus is passing by and they begin to yell, Jesus! I mean, do we want healing that much? That no matter who is around us, it's between me and Jesus. And I am not going to be ashamed, embarrassed, or anything to ask the Lord to do something special in my life. And as they yelled, Jesus came to them. Jesus didn't do hocus pocus. He didn't jump around. He didn't do a dance. All he said was, go show yourself to the priest. Because according to the law... When you were healed of leprosy, you showed yourself to the priest because the priest would then give you the stamp of approval and that you were healed. And then you could go back home to your family, to your job and to worshiping God. And as the 10 men turned around to go to to show themselves, the Bible tells us that they began to get healed from leprosy. Could you imagine fallen fingers growing back, fallen noses growing back as they took steps of faith? Again, Jesus was going to give them something, but they had to do what? Play their part and take a step and walk as Jesus told them to go and do this. Obey my commands, Jesus says, right? If you love me. And so as, as they were going back, one man, a Samaritan, turns around. He sees that he's being healed. He turns around and he falls at Jesus' feet, worshiping him. And Jesus asks the question, why aren't they 10? It's like, where are the others? Where are the grateful ones? And then he ends that in verse uh, 11 and 19 of Luke 17, he says, and he said to him, rise up and go away. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has healed you. And then again, another incident, Jesus opens the eyes of a blind man and the way he does it is very peculiar. And this is to remind us that there is no set pattern there's no box we could put God in, stuff him in there and say, this is God and this is how he works. And he, he does it very peculiarly. How does he do it? I'll read that. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents? That he was born blind. I, right? Right away. Right? People want to start accusing, oh, that person has cancer. Oh, oh, they probably smoke too much. Listen, if God's going to do something, he's going to do something. And Jesus answers and tells him and tells them, neither this man nor his parents sinned. So then why did this happen? Jesus gives an answer. This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. It happens so that God could be glorified. Everything that, that, that we do, everything that God does for us is for the glory and the honor of God. This is why he desires to do these things. This is why this is God's heart to heal the hurts of his people. So that he could be glorified. And then it tells us that, um, that Jesus says, bring them here to me. And then uh, Jesus says, 
he goes through this whole thing of, of I'm the light of the world, and, and while there's still light, we need to work right before the darkness comes. And, then he's, and, and in verse 6, he says, after saying this, he spit on the ground. He made some mud with his saliva. Talk about out of the ordinary. And he put it on the man's eyes. And then he tells him, wash, go wash in the pool of Salaam. And now it says here, this word means sent. So Jesus sent him to sent. You don't find that humorous? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesus had a sense of humor. But Jesus uses an, uh, a non-typical way of healing this man. He spits on the ground. He makes mud. He puts it in the man's eyes. And then he tells the man, this is what I want to give you. Now do your part. Take the step of faith. It tells us that after the man went and washed, the man, he came back. Seeing Now, if you read the rest of the story, I love the part that, I mean, he gets questioned by the Pharisees. Uh, the Pharisees were always there to accuse uh, these people that were being healed. It's like the first guy, uh, he carried the mat, which he was laying on for 38 days. And what did the Pharisees say to him? Hey, you're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. Like they didn't say, hey, this guy was crippled for 38 years. What an amazing miracle. No. Hey, you're not supposed to be carrying that. <laughs> They missed it. They missed the whole thing. And here we see in this story, if you read that later on, we'll see the same thing. They questioned this blind man. And then finally, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the blind man uh, is, is dejected by the Pharisees and he's sitting all alone because he, he didn't know who the man was. He said, I don't know who he was, but all I know is that once I was blind and now I see And he comes back and Jesus comes up to him seeing this man dejected and, and rejected and sitting there broken. And he says, what's the matter? He says, well, you know, it's a man healed my eyes and, and I don't know who it is. And I love this part because this guy couldn't see since birth. And what are the words Jesus uses to talk and bring this man back in, in encouragement? He says, now you see him. Now you see him. That's the glory of God. Now some may say, well, that's all good and well. And that was in the old days. And that was the Bible. God don't do those kind of things anymore. Now the Bible tells us this. That God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have in our church... A living testimony of a God who still does miracles today. I'm going to ask if Dick Kresge would come up and give us a few minutes and share with us his testimony of God's healing in his life. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> 1997, I was discovered that I had prostate cancer and uh, I was I decided to have surgery and was supposed to happen on April 1st of that year well the, the day before I went out into the forest behind my home and started walking and talking to the Lord Come on, bro. Testify. and as I as I was walking I felt like the Lord was carrying me I was praising him for what he, what a great family he had given me. And as I walked, it felt like I was being carried. And uh, I was about a mile long in my walk. I came to a clearing and it was late in the afternoon and the sun was trying to break through an overcast sky. And I looked up at the sun and this is something I've never saw in my life before. But that sun had a rainbow completely circling the sun. And uh, I kept on walking and it felt like it was no effort to walk, like I was being carried. And when I, 
I got home, I told my wife about it. And uh, she said, that was God. And uh, uh, that evening, it started to snow real hard. And uh, I knew the next day was, was going to be my surgery on April 1st of 97. And uh, I got up in the morning. There's two feet of snow on the ground in Bear Creek. <laughs> I uh, didn't know how I was going to get to the hospital to have my surgery. My, my son-in-law lived next door who worked at the general hospital where I was going for the surgery. He was, uh, and it, he took me down in his, his four wheel drive vehicle and uh, the roads hadn't, weren't even plowed and I didn't know how we were gonna get there, but we, we made it and I got there, they prepared me for the surgery and as they're wheeling me down the aisle, the song came to me and it was a new song then, Because He Lives. I was singing, singing that all the way to the, to the operating room. And uh, not necessarily out loud, but more to myself. And uh, after the surgery, they told me that I may, I may be three months to a year, be, I, I would be incontinent from this surgery. Well, I was depending on Depends for that time. But after a month and a half, I no longer had to depend on Depends. God, God I was totally healed. And... Uh, it's been that way ever since 19, April 1st, 1997. Now that's not the end of it. I had another surgery after that with, with pleural effusion. I went through that and uh, God healed me. I then, in 19, or no, 2017, April, they diagnosed I had multiple myeloma. That's cancer of the bone marrow. Well, uh, that, they, my son-in-law that was that I told you took me to the hospital. He had told me that that was a death sentence years ago. Well, they started me on chemo and all those type of drugs, and uh, and I came through that. And uh, I, uh, it's something that I was on all kinds of p pills and medication, and they told me I will, you're going to have to be on this the rest of your life. Well, for some reason, I got good results, and they, I, I was in remission, and they told me that uh, they were going to take me off all my medication. That was three years ago, last August. I haven't taken any, any uh, medication at all, and I'm getting good reports every, every year. I have a, a meeting, a one coming up again. They used to do it every month, now, and then it was three months. Now they're doing it every four months, and each time I go, they, they even augured my bones and out of my hip to see if the if that disease is still there, and they say they can't find it. But it's, it's not saying it may come, re, re, return. But I'm 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 just thankful for all. Oh, and when all this happened, beginning happened, my wife and I had been in the Gideons about a year, and at that time when I had that first surgery, I told you about, I asked. I told the Lord, I want to try and help you. So I went, they asked me in, uh, at my camp, at the Gideon camp where I, uh, where I went to, to our Gideon meetings, they asked me if I would speak in churches to, to raise funds for to buy Bibles throughout the world. And we did, and my wife and I spent many years traveling all over the United States and, and even Pennsylvania. And I spoke in churches all over Pennsylvania even some in New York and Ohio, raising funds for the Gideons so I could go and hand out, I've handed out thousands of these at colleges and universities all over, well, in Harrisburg, Philadelphia, in our area here in Wilkes-Barre. And uh, he gave us, he gave us uh, the strength to do it. And uh, I, I wanted to honor God and try to do work to work for the Lord Amen. and uh, I'm still doing it occasionally I'm speaking in churches yet uh, for the Gideons but uh, so, so how old are you now 25 <laughs> uh, let's see it's my let's see I would say the 
how do I say it, the 43rd anniversary of my 39th birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Lord willing, next month I'll be 83. So, so I praise God all the, every time, and, and I've got a lovely family, and son-in-laws, and, and uh, daughter-in-laws, and grandchildren, and now I even got great-grandbabies, seven of those. So God's been, God's been good. He's been good to me. Amen. Thank you, Dick, for sharing that um, testimony with us. We appreciate it so much. And, um, and God's still the God of miracles. And God's still the God who heals human hurts. Um, I had a dear friend. Uh, her husband was a pastor, and he had retired, and... Um, he went in for a typical, simple procedure, and um, he passed away from the procedure. And she was hurting, really hurting, and struggling with this, and wondering why God. This is just a, he survived cancer, and now he was going for something else, a simple overnight procedure, and boom. And as she was crying in her house, she claims that she saw the Lord come before her and promised that he was always with her. She said she felt a peace that her hurt was healed at that moment. And um, she's with the Lord now herself and probably with her husband as well. Not probably, but with her husband as well. God is a God who heals our hurts physically, mentally. So, we're going to take time today to, to, to pray for those that, that, that want to seek the Lord. Now, um, we've been planning this service for a while, and it just seems like, like um, we have an enemy who did not want this to happen because special things were going to happen here. Um, I mean, we see what happened with Pastor John. He was going to be my helper today. Um, so... Uh, even wounded soldiers can still fight. Amen? And we, that's what we're in. We're in a battle. We're in a battle against the forces of evil. And when we say we want God to be glorified, we are challenging the enemy right at his gates. But we are promised that the gates of hell will not prevail against God's church. And so we're here today to say, God, have your way in me. I'm here to receive whatever it is you want to do in my life. Isaiah 53 verse 46, 4 and 6 says, Surely he took upon himself our pain he bore our sufferings yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our inequities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed, not might be, not was, not will be, but are. So before we go into uh, having a time of prayer, um, before I ask people to come up, um, I'll be signing off of Facebook because it's a private time. Whatever you say to, to, to us up here, I say us because um, Glenn Blakesley, and Dick Kresge will be helping me pray um, with, with, with you for your needs. And um, that's a private time. But before we get into that, this is what we need to do to experience release from our pain and injuries and hurts. First, we must face our problems openly. We must face our responsibility in it. We must genuinely decide that we want to be healed. 
We must be willing to forgive those who were involved in our past hurts. We must be willing to forgive ourselves. We must ask the Holy Spirit to help us gain insight and revelation into what is our deepest hurt. And we must ask the Holy Spirit, ask him how to pray that we would receive this healing that he's offering us. So, this woman comes up to, to play. Um, I'm going to be signing off of Facebook at this time. But before we do, if you're watching through Facebook, I want you to know that the same God that's here is standing next to you right now. And he wants to do something special in your life as well. And so he wants you to take the step of faith. And I will pray for you right now at this moment that you will receive from the Lord the healing for the hurt that you are experiencing right now. So, Father, I pray for those that are watching. I pray that they would have the strength to face their hurt to examine their hurt, and then to bring it to you in sincerity and answer that question, do you want to be healed? That they would answer it with a resounding, yes, Lord. You have paid the price. You have done the work. And by your stripes, we are healed. By your wounds, we are healed. So, Father, I pray that you would touch them right now and heal them through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing impossible for you, Lord. And so, Father, I just pray that you would touch each life in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you guys that are watching. And so we're going to say...